The Room VR A Dark Matter is an investigative, creepy, kind of puzzle-solving game. And I played it on the Pico 4. They provided me with the Pico 4 as well as the games. And this one was recently in headlines, getting some free updates. So there's people checking it out. So I decided I was going to play it and do a quick review for you. I want to talk about the graphics, the controls, gameplay, the puzzles. Are are they hard? Are they good? Are they satisfying? Sound design is actually a pretty significant part of it as well because it does kind of try to set a creepy sort of foreboding vibe. And then I want to ask the question, like, is it scary? I will end the video by saying, do I recommend it? And uh, I've been doing these videos, you know, on a couple of VR titles. If you want to check those out, we'll try to put these in a playlist for you. And then I will do a final review video of the Pico 4 as a VR uh, device. So let's just take a look here. I'm going to play my recording. Now, I had to do a second recording because I screencast from the Pico 4 and uh, something happened that was... I don't know, like, it it interrupted it, and then my mouse is going to be on the screen because I have to record like a browser. So apologies about the mouse. There's nothing I can do about it. (laughs) I, I couldn't do another recording. So graphics, okay? The graphics are actually quite good. I think in a game like this, you kind of need the graphics to sell the environment, sell the setting. And you'll notice this is the second level. I did the first level. It was the one that I was going to show you. So don't pay too close attention to what I'm doing in the video, you, you know, if you're, you're not wanting to have anything ruined for you. A uh, little heads up, you'll want to give yourself a little bit of space. I didn't sort of reset the environment uh, in a VR device like the Pico. You can sort of set the environment around you. Just a little heads up. You might want to expand it a teeny bit. You don't need a ton of room for this one. I played this one sitting down. Didn't have a single issue. Some people prefer to have a nice big open area. And then they're going to, you know, move around. I really encourage people to do that in my last one, which was super hot. The one where, like, you're shooting and moving. This one you can comfortably play sitting down. And I think the graphics are quite good. I mean, you'll notice here there's really intricate designs that I think is one of the cool things about the puzzles is as you're interacting with these objects and these items, there's a lot of, like, little teeny moving parts. And you'll notice just this environment with the bricks and some of the gold inlay and some of the intricacies that they use in the environment are actually quite good. So I give the graphics very, very high praise for a VR title. Typically, VR games sometimes don't go for strong graphics, but this thing looked great and ran great on the Pico 4. I had no complaints about the graphics. Now, controls. Controls in a VR game can honestly make or break it when you have to like re-grab stuff, when you kind of have to like, you know, position your hand in a funny way that doesn't feel natural. It can really sort of ruin the game. This one was very intuitive. You're noticing I'm putting on like this green vision. You pull up your inventory and like hit a switch. Very intuitive, responsive, never felt like I was in those situations where I was having to repeat motions or getting almost stuck because I can't grab something just right. It's pretty obvious when you go up to something whether or not you can interact with it. Like you go to grab it and nothing happens. You catch on fairly quickly about that. So I would say the controls are good. Sometimes these little boxes that you have to open, you have to tip it like all the way up. That's very, very common in games these days. That might be another reason why you want to give yourself a little bit more room. It's immersion breaking when you start to hit the barrier and that like purple wall comes up to let you know, hey, you know, you're going to hit something. So give yourself a little bit of room there because there are some of those boxes or, or puzzles where you're sort of having to grab and peel back or open and pry. And you're not going to want to have those, you know, those pesky walls and barriers coming up. So graphics and controls, just no complaints at all. Very intuitive. You can see here I'm kind of solving this lock and moving things back and forth, rotating. Not any issues. Again, I'm never having to like repeat motions. uh, And that leads to sort of the gameplay. What is sort of the premise of the gameplay? Well, the way that you move around is teleport movement. Now, if you want to switch those settings and things like that, I don't think you're going to need to do that because every point of interest is sort of predetermined for you to go stand and figure out. So I, I typically don't like teleport movement in games like this. I like to move around on my own. But the teleport movement, as you can see here, you literally point where you want to go and then you're there. 
it works quite well. So essentially what you're doing is you're going to all the points of interest in the area and exhausting what you can do. Can I turn something, grab something, open something up? Is there a piece missing? You'll notice here, I put this here and it's not ready yet. It even says I must have missed something. So they'll, they'll kind of help you along the way. You can't get like soft locked or anything like that. So as you're sort of gathering the items, you're moving around and looking for more items to either open something move something advance into a new room you know that's that's pretty much the gist of it and i found it to be very satisfying it did genuinely feel like i was solving puzzles there was these aha moments of like oh i i have the thing for this or it would suddenly dawn on me i'm like oh you dummy you've got the thing you just saw me grab something that i forget that i have it for a while and then all of a sudden I remember like, oh, I have this thing. I can I can go use this. I can I can advance. And here I'm just tinkering and not getting anywhere. So that that kind of leads to the next uh, section, the puzzles. This game would in my estimation be it, w- it would be sort of a make or break on the puzzles because that's essentially what you're doing is you're solving the environment. You're looking around for visual clues. Uh, there's there's hints, there's symbols sometimes and things that you have to look at. And I found the first room and this room. I didn't get all the way finished with this room. I got far enough that I had footage so that I could make this video. I I didn't want to record another. I think I recorded like 30 minutes and it was like, do you want to start your screencast? It somehow got disconnected. So I had 30 minutes of that. It was riveting uh, gameplay. Uh, So I, this room here, I got about halfway through and I found the puzzles to be great. There was only a few times where I was like, what am I supposed to do? What am I missing? And I would just revisit the points of interest, sort of look around, sort of tinker. And it was typically these aha moments, like I forgot something. Like, for example, in the first room, no spoilers, I'm not going to help you solve it. But in the first room, there was this thing that when you pulled on it, it did something in the room that you're like, oh, I don't I don't need to do that. And then you, you switched it to do something else. Well, later on, you have to go back and do it again, but you got to switch it back to what it originally was doing. And you're like, oh, I can do that now because something was in a new location. I'm keeping it very generic. So those aha moments were satisfying because I felt like they really set the room up in a progressive way to where you would forget certain things And then they would sort of come back to you and dawn on you. And I found those moments to be very satisfying because it did truly feel like all on my own, I'm just using the environment, I'm just using the things in the room to solve the puzzles. So I give the the puzzles high marks. Now, sound design. This is one of those games where there's sort of constant ambience or ambiance, however you're supposed to say it. And with the Pico, it uses like speakers. It doesn't actually use headphones. I was really struck by how it sounded like I thought my kids were were down and doing something in the other room. I was like, what are they doing? I thought they were upstairs reading. Did they just suddenly come downstairs? And I thought they were like getting books or something from the bookshelves in the other room. It was impressive how good it sounded. And it wasn't even through headphones. So I'd imagine if you play this with headphones, you'll even, I think, more so get that sense of there's just this really good presence to the game, like the creaking of wood. It sounds like stuff is moving or falling. And then there's those moments where you figure something out and there's kind of like lightning striking or you know something kind of creepy happens i definitely had a few goosebumps moments from the sound itself i'm very receptive to that not everybody is receptive to uh sort of like auditory stimulation like asmr videos like they give me kind of the tingles and they're really relaxing some people don't like that at all so whenever i play scary games like this i find the sound design can really sort of take me to that creepy crawly like ooh feeling and i felt that really added to the vibe of this game it really gave it that sense of not that you're in danger or anything's going to happen but i just think it sets a nice tone because it's you know you're picking up letters and there's you know scary things that you're investigating disappearances and things of that nature so i think it makes it feel almost sherlock holmes-esque you know in kind of the sherlock holmes movies and stories sometimes it can get a little creepy can get a little cultish and so the environment and the setting and the graphics and the sound design, I think all really come together. Even the music at times, there's very subtle uses of music that I thought was very well done. Which leads to the question, like, is it scary? This isn't really a scary game. I don't even know if I would say creepy. It just kind of has that 
sort of dark tone to it, that dark feeling that you're, you're you know you're investigating something that's sort of scary. You never really feel like there's going to be a boo, like a jump scare or something grotesque or gruesome. And obviously, I only did two rooms, but I don't think that's really the point of the game. So if you're looking for a game to kind of jump scare you and spook you, like some of the other VR games that are out there that are kind of going in that vein, this is not that kind of game. This is a little bit more akin to like a Talos principle or a mist where you're moving things, tinkering things, reading things, picking up clues and, you know, using the the goggle, the, the, the lens to try to kind of solve where different things are and everything else. So the question is, do I recommend it? If you like these kinds of games, because I, I wanted to keep playing. Uh, my wife and I have played another game called like Escape. Uh, escape Room Simulator or Escape Simulator. That game's awesome, and that has VR in it. I'm looking forward to trying out... Well, not yet. They're going to do a VR update to that game. I'm looking forward to trying that game in VR on my Pico 4 because I can plug it into my computer. Another great reason to get a Pico 4. It's standalone, but you can use it with your computer. And uh, this kind of reminded me of Escape Room Simulator in a better way, though. Like It wasn't like I'm trying to escape. It was more... It felt more intentional about the clues that it gave. The escape simulator was, I think, a little bit... It's, it tends to be, like, more vague in how they set it up and how you solve it. And this game, I think, was very much sort of breadcrumb direct. You're sort of getting just enough as you go to solve the puzzle. So if you like games like that, I highly recommend this one. I really wanted to jump back in and figure it out uh, and, and finish this room because we're not going to get to the clip... But I do something really, really cool in this room and like things open up and like statues come out. It's really neat. Uh, Again, I think they just set like a a really, really great tone. So I highly recommend this one uh, if you can get it on, you know, wherever you're playing VR games. Again, one of the advantages of the Pico 4, it's an all-in-one device. I could go sit on my couch right now and boot this up and finish the room and I don't have to be connected to anything. I don't need my TV. I don't need any of that. So I will do a final review of the Pico 4 as a device. I'll kind of include some of the things I've said. I did Super Hot. I did, uh, and the other one is After the Fall. Uh, I reviewed that uh, as well and have really enjoyed my time with these games. And so this one is definitely one I would recommend checking out. So let me go, let's go full screen here. And if you enjoyed this review, I typically upload these, premiere these, and then I go hang out with members on my channel. So consider becoming a member. It'll get you access to those extra discussions and debriefs. Make sure you hit the like button, support these videos. It's a great opportunity for us to get a chance to look at games, preview them and review them. I was not paid. Uh, to do this so I would have been honest if I didn't like the game like I'm allowed to do that I just have to admit that like hey they gave me the game they gave me the Pico but I would be honest if I didn't enjoy the game uh, because I am not being paid I'm not like worried about them you know saying like hey you, you, you were supposed to be nice to our game I genuinely enjoyed this one and I do like these kinds of puzzle games and so I might I might crack back in there and try and solve the the puzzle in the room that I was in. So, as always, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, hang out for that uh, that debrief with members if you are a member. If not, at least hit that subscribe button and that bell button so I can see you in the next video.